Did you know that Mars is just two-fifths the size of Earth? If you weigh 100 kilograms here, you'd only weigh 38 on Mars. That might sound like a dream, lighter, easier, freer, but what if I told you this exact thing could be what destroys the human body on Mars? SpaceX are planning to send humans to Mars as soon as 2029. Some scientists believe astronauts who live there might never be able to return to Earth, and that's only just the beginning. In this video, we'll uncover the hidden dangers of Mars that no one's talking about. Stick around to the end because we'll reveal a theory that suggests Mars might force humanity to evolve into something else entirely. Subscribe now to follow the greatest mission in human history. The dream of Mars has been sold to us like a sci-fi adventure. Bold, inspiring, historic. But before we can even set foot on the red planet, there's the journey. Six to nine months inside a metal tube in zero gravity, Every day, the body begins to change. Astronauts train for this. Years of physical and psychological prep. Simulations in remote deserts. Mars-like bases in the Arctic. But even that doesn't simulate what really happens without gravity. Because once you leave Earth, your body starts to forget it. And by the time you arrive, you might already be broken. Elon Musk has said, gravity on Mars is a big unknown. We just don't know if humans can live long term on 0.38 Gs. Yet, SpaceX is still aiming for a cargo mission in 2027 and potentially the first crewed mission as early as 2029. While the ambition is higher, the biological risk is higher. The deeper question remains, can human bodies thrive in an environment where they're never designed for? The moment astronauts escape Earth's pull, everything changes. Inside the spacecraft, gravity is gone. Fluids shift upwards, muscles relax, bones stop working. They call it the moon face. Puffed features, pressure in the head, nausea. The spine stretches, causing back pain. The heart pumps less, the bones start dissolving. The body thinks gravity has disappeared for good, so it starts throwing away what it doesn't need. And this silent deterioration continues for months. The psychological effects also begin here. Days blur together, physical changes alter mood and behavior. But landing on Mars isn't a relief, it's a whole new problem. While Mars is not zero gravity, it's not Earth either. It's only 38% of Earth's gravity, a place in between. And our bodies have no idea what to do with that. Astronauts land already weakened. Their muscles and bones have softened during the trip. Now they must work, build, survive, with bodies not built for it. Simple movements become exhausting. Walking feels floaty but unnatural. Your heart struggles, your sense of balance is off. Daily routine Scenes that were effortless on Earth, like bending, lifting, running, become complex and risky tasks. You're on another planet, but your body is lost in space. And the worst part, the damage doesn't stop here. Here on Earth, your muscles resist gravity constantly just by standing. On Mars, that pressure disappears. Muscle atrophy begins immediately. Bone mass drops by up to 1% per month. The calcium goes into your bloodstream, increasing kidney stone risk. Even with daily exercise, your body continues to degrade. The biggest concern is compounding failure. Weak muscles lead to poor posture. Poor posture leads to more strain. And soon, simple tasks become dangerous. Every breath, every movement, your skeleton is giving up and you haven't even faced what happens to your brain yet. Low gravity doesn't just affect the body, it rewires the brain. Fluids press upward. Pressure builds behind the eyes. Some astronauts experience blurry vision. Others suffer from cognitive fog, headaches, and even memory issues. This is called SANS, Space Flight Associated Neuro ocular syndrome and it's not fully understood. On Mars, these symptoms could become permanent. Prolonged changes in vision may prevent astronauts from completing basic tasks. Decision making can slow down. Reflexes become dull because if your brain changes here, who are you when you return to Earth? Here on Earth, gravity helps your blood flow. On Mars, that support vanishes. The heart doesn't need to work as hard, so it starts to shrink. Blood pools in the upper body. Dizziness and fainting become common. Some astronauts in space have even developed blood clots, a silent, sudden killer. And that's just from short missions. What happens when you're on a mission for 500 days? Your cardiovascular system is your engine. If it starts to fail, everything else follows. It's not just physical. Mars plays tricks on the mind. Isolation, confinement, sensory deprivation, time distortion. The Martian day is 24 hours and 39 minutes. That alone can disrupt your circadian rhythm. Sleep problems, depression, mood swings, hallucinations, group dynamics under stress become volatile. Even the red light of the Martian surface, the silence of an airless world, and the knowledge that help is millions of kilometers away can weigh heavily on your psyche. You're millions of kilometers from Earth, and your own mind might turn against you. Earth protects us with a magnetic field. Mars does 
doesn't have one. Radiation from cosmic rays and solar storms hits the surface constantly. It damages cells, weakens the immune system, and increases cancer risk. The longer you stay, the more you absorb. Combine that with gravity loss, and you've got a body breaking down and no way to heal. The only protection? Living underground. But that creates a new set of challenges. Psychological stress, energy needs, limited mobility. Let's say the mission ends. It's time to come home. But here's the twist. You might not survive the return. Your muscles, bones, hearts, all adapted to low gravity. On Earth, they collapse under pressure. You may be unable to walk or breathe or even stand. Some effects could be irreversible and worse. What if future generations born on Mars can never return at all? Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson has expressed doubts. You don't just get to live on Mars. You have to become something else entirely to survive there. What if we didn't try to fight Mars but changed ourselves instead? Some scientists believe future colonists might adapt, even evolve. Over generations, we might become taller, lighter, different. New muscle structures, new bone density, a new human species, Homo Martianus. Could we modify ourselves with biotech or gene editing to match the planet? CRISPR, synthetic biology, biomechanical enhancements? But if we change that much, are we still human? Supporters like Robert Zubrin, founder of the Mars Society, believe that this is humanity's destiny. He believes adapting to Mars isn't a problem, it's an opportunity to evolve. Solutions are being explored. Artificial gravity through rotating habitats, pharmaceuticals to preserve bone density, smart suits that resist muscle loss, underground cities shielded from radiation, AI monitoring for vital signs, augmented reality interfaces to guide astronauts through cognitive slumps, bioregenerative life support systems. But nothing has been fully tested on Mars. Nothing has solved the full equation and time is running out because the first mission could launch before the decade ends. We're obsessed with becoming a multi-planetary species, but there's a cost. Mars may take our strength, our health, our memories, our identity. So here's the final question. To build a future on Mars, are we willing to leave part of our humanity behind? Because this isn't just a mission to another world. It might be the first step towards becoming something entirely new. If you found this video fascinating, subscribe to Future Near for more deep dive journeys into the future of space, tech, and humanity. Let us know in the comments. Would you go to Mars, knowing you might never come back the same? See you on the next one, space fans.